We come here to join in with other clubs to Malama, uh, this place through our um, community service uh, by cleaning the chapel and um, the other parts of Mount Allah. When we drive here in the morning and we're part of um, giving tribute back to our Ali'i by helping take care of all the things that need to be taken care of here when it comes to um, taking care of the grounds, um, cleaning the chapel, um, just relating to all those different stories that are connected to being here, but also to feeling like we make a difference and, and we honor them. Right up by the mango tree up here, there's a chain and connected on the end of that chain was a cannon that Kalani Kapuli got off of a British ship. This was Kalani Kapuli, who was the Ali'i Nui of Oahu in the time when, you know, Kamehameha invaded Oahu to, to uh, unify the islands. And he had it placed there specifically because this was his best vantage point. He could see everything. If you were to, you know, eliminate these buildings and whatnot, and you look from where that chain is, the cannon was strapped to that chain, it is one perfect view. You can see everything. I mean, from all the way past Kalihi, all the way around Puvaina, Punch Bowl, you can see everything. And that's why he was here when, <clears throat> when Kamehameha, invaded Oahu, he sent half of his warriors up from where Aloha Tower is and he and the other half from Kahala side. There was a lot of fighting along the way, but this is where the Battle of Nu'uanu basically began to get really fierce and where Kalani Kapuli actually stood and fired his cannon. And all that led to Queen Emma and Kamehameha IV using this site. There, there is so much mana here. It's, it's such a sacred, special place. And they felt it back then. And that's why the site was chosen. It's indescribable for me how much pride, how much aloha, how much um, depth, sadness. There's all these different parts when we come because certain times when we're together, it's a joyful moment because we're all together as a hui. And I'm so proud of our club when they come and they help us. Uh, like this last experience, we had two individuals that came, never ever in all their lives been to Mauna Allah. And one of our new members, he's, he's an older person, never been to Mauna Allah. And to hear the stories, to interact with Kai and others, it's like, lifetime experience. Once in your lifetime, you get to be there at that moment to participate in that. So it's incredible. Everybody who volunteers their time and comes to Mauna Ala, it's greatly appreciated. I mean, they do a wonderful job and just the presence of them and because they're all really, really good people that are always interested in in any story of Mauna Ala, but just by having them here is uh, a special thing. It continues the legacy that Kohio um, started with the <clears throat> with the civic clubs, you know. Just want to say mahalo to them. It, it's really uh, wonderful that they continue to do this, you know. Time is precious nowadays, <laughs> you know, and to volunteer your time is, um, is even more than, than money. And so to have something so meaningful like Mauna Ala X here present in our time, all Hawaiians should come and treasure and malama this for, for seven generations. You have to keep passing it down. It is our past, it's our present, it's our future. So. And if we keep going down this path and making sure we regard it, we respect it, we educate others about it, then we are doing our part for the Ali'i who, who suffered and who 
joy, joyfully were part of our lives at some point in time. Mauna Allah is here to not only to remember our past, uh, but it is also to engage in a cultural relationship of between our ali'i and us as Maka'ainala and to continue to um, in that space and time today and tomorrow to be um, to hold dearly to our hearts of what it means to be a Native Hawaiian.